hey, are you wondering how to help your child who's having behavioral problems at school? If so, you're going to love today's video because I'm going to share three things your child wishes you would know when they're struggling at school. Number one, when you get that phone call from the teacher, the first thing your child wishes you knew is that it's not about you that it's about them. And so when you take it personally and you start feeling judgment or you start feeling defensive, that can really get in the way of helping your child be successful. And sometimes what we do when we feel like we're on the defense is we act to compensate or overcompensate. So what we might do is over punish our child or bad mouth the teacher and neither of those things is actually going to bring you into resolution. So remember that when you get a phone call from your child's teacher, it's not something bad about your parenting or who you are as a person, but that your child's teacher is struggling, maybe in some of the same areas where you're struggling with your child to really help them be successful. So that's the first thing your child wants you to know. The second thing your child wants you to know is that their environment really impacts them. In the same way, when you go outside and it's sunny and 90 degrees, you start sweating. If there are things that aren't a good match for your child, either in terms of relationship or expectations or even chaos in some environments, your child's going to respond in a way that's not consciously predetermined. And for children, their school setting and their home settings and the people in them are their environments. And so your child is responding to the triggers and the information that are around them. And so that's really important. And your child wants you to know that because when you understand that, what happens is you start working together to help shift your child's environment rather than pointing the finger at them. One of the things parents say to me when they are trying to figure out how to connect with or discipline their child when they have negative behavior at school is they'll ask the question like, well, why did you do that? Or they'll say, I got a call from your child's teacher. You better tell me what's going on. And that feels very much like finger pointing. And one of the automatic reactions kids who have intense brains who struggle with authority and not being in control, one of the things that they, ways that they react is with the blame reflex. And they, whenever they feel like the finger's pointing at them rather than you're in it together to find ways for them to be more successful, it's going to really be difficult for your dynamic in actually coming into resolution. Let's move into the third thing your child wishes you knew for when he's getting in trouble at school. If your child struggles with ADHD or a sensory processing disorder or they're on the autism spectrum, there are primary categories where they tend to struggle. One of them is organizational skills. Another is following rules and letting somebody else be an authority. A third category is social skills and getting along with others in a way that's appropriate. A fourth category is paying attention and having focus. And then the fifth category is having control over impulsive behaviors, so demonstrating self-control or self-regulation. So what your child wishes you knew was the skills that they're really struggling with. It's easy for us to identify where we want our children to go and the skills we want them to demonstrate. But what can happen is it overshadows our ability to see that there are some skills that are actually missing. And without your support as their advocate and the primary person in their environment, those skills aren't going to be able to develop. And when we can point the finger, so to speak, at what needs to be developed, it takes the pressure off your child's feeling like a bad kid or feeling like um, there's something wrong with him. And so your child really wishes you knew what the areas are where they need more support in order to be successful. Now, in order, before we close this off here, it's also important to recognize that when you know these three things that your child wants you to know, number one, that it's not about you, 
number two, that they're responding to the environment around them, and number three, that there are certain specific skill areas that need to be addressed in order to be successful. It's really critical to know that putting a plan in place is something that's going to take time in order for them to be successful. So this isn't an overnight fix. And if you're taking behavior personally and you're looking for things to change immediately, then you're not setting either of yourselves up for success. It's kind of like potty training. It's very rare that we expect a child who's a toddler or maybe a little bit older even or younger where we expect them to just sit on the toilet and be able to use the potty every single day for the rest of their lives. You probably remember sticker, maybe you use a sticker chart or some sort of um, treat system so that your child earned some sort of reward after each baby step, step they took into developing this new skill. And the same thing is true whether your child is nine or 19 years old and they're pursuing an academic um, academic success. You want to make sure that your eye is focused on the positives and the skills that you're helping them develop and dangling that carrot of reward so that they feel motivated to move along this journey of developing new skills that are really challenging for them. If you like this information, then please do join me tomorrow for my webinar on school behavior. It's specifically for you if you're getting calls from your child's teacher and you're wondering, why does my child struggle so much with self-control and managing their behavior? And whether that's at school or whether that's at home, you're going to understand exactly what the strong-willed or intense brain child's needs are in order for them to have better self-control so they can be successful. And that's what I want for your child, to be able to be the best and brightest selves possible. And that's why I love educating you. Thank you so much for joining this week's Mad to Glad Parenting Tip. I will catch you next time. And in the meantime, remember that what you do matters. So if you'd like to dust off any rusty um, skills in your skill set and you want to know more about how to specifically help your child develop self-control, please do join me for my webinar tomorrow at noon central time. And if you're not able to make that time, sign up anyways, and we'll send you the replay link. Until next week's Mad to Glad Parenting Tip, take care, carve out some time to be thoughtful, and I look forward to seeing you later. Bye-bye.